cow overflows. Bhishma continues the response to Yudhishthir. Truth cannot be explained in words. The moment it is explained, it becomes false. Therefore, in order to speak that which explain that which cannot be explained, symbols are to be used. Stories, anecdotes, they are the way to use symbols. Along with children born through the transformed state, the monarch returned to the kingdom. Then the monarch addressed everyone in these words. You are the children of my loins while I was a man. These are my children brought forth by me in this state of transformation. You sons, do you all enjoy my kingdom together? like brothers born of the same parents. At this command of their parents, all the brothers uniting together began to enjoy the kingdom as their joint property. Beholding these children of the king, all jointly enjoying the kingdom as brothers born of the, the same parentage, the chief of the celestials filled with wrath began to reflect by transforming this royal sage into a woman i have it seems done him good instead of an injury saying this the chief of celestials indra assumed the form of a brahman and came to the capital of the king and meeting all the children succeeded in disuniting the princes, he said on to them, Brothers, never remain at peace, even when they are born, they happen to be the children of the same parent. The son of the sage Kashyap, for example, the deities and asurs, the demons, quarrel with each other on the account of the sovereignty of three worlds. As regards you, princes, you are the children of the royal sage Bhangaswana, and these brothers are the children of an ascetic. The deities and demons are children of even one common sire, Kashyap. And yet they, they later quarrel with each other. How much more, therefore, should you quarrel with each other? This kingdom that is yours, your paternal property is being enjoyed by these children of the ascetic. With these words, Indra succeeded in causing a breach between them, so they were very soon engaged in a battle and slew each other. Hearing this, the King Bhangaswana, who was living as an ascetic woman, burned with grief and poured forth her lamentations. The Lord of Celestials Indra, assuming the guise of a Brahman, came to the spot where the ascetic lady was living and meeting her said, O oh, you! that are possessed with beautiful face, with what grief do you burn so that you are pouring forth your lamentations? Beholding the Brahman, the lady told him in a piteous voice, Two hundred children, sons of mine, O regenerate one, have been slain by time. I was formerly a king, O learned Brahman, and in that state had hundred sons. These were begotten by me after my own form. On one occasion I went on, an, on a hunting expedition. Stupefied, I wandered amidst the thick forest. Beholding at least a lake, I plunged into it. Rising, O foremost of Brahmins, I found that I became a woman. Returning to my capital, 
I install my sons in the sovereignty of my dominion and then departed for the forest. Transformed into a woman, I, wore, I bore 100 sons to my husband who is a highly sold ascetic. All of them were born in ascetics ashram. I took them to the capital. My children, through the influence of time, quarreled with each other, O oh, twice born one. This afflicted my, by, this, thus afflicted by destiny, I am indulging in grief. Indra addressed him in these words. In former days, O oh lady, you gave me great pain, for you did perform a sacrifice that is disliked by Indra. Indeed, though I was present, you did not invoke me with honors. I am Indra. O oh, you, O oh of you, wicked, wicked understanding, it is I with whom you have purposely sought hostilities. Beholding Indra, the royal sage, fell at his feet, touching them with his head, and said, Be gratified with me, O foremost of deities. The sacrifice of which you speak was performed from desire of offspring, and not from any wish to hurt you. It befits you, therefore, to grant me your pardon. Indra, seeing the transformed Munav, prostrate himself, thus unto him became gratified with him and desired to give him a boon. Which of your sons, O king, do you wish should revive? Those that are brought forward, brought forth by you, transformed into a woman, or those that were begotten by you in your condition as a person of male sex. The ascetic woman, joining her hands, answered Indra, saying, O Vyas, let those sons of mine came to life that were born by me as an ascetic in woman form. Filled with wonder at this reply, Indra once more asked the lady, Why do you entertain less affection for those children of yours that were begotten by you in your form as a person of male sex? Why is it that you bear greater affection for those children that were born by you in your transformed state as a woman and in the state when you were living as an ascetic? I wish to hear the reason of this difference in respect of your affection towards the children born out of two different states. It befits you to tell me everything, the lady said. The affection that is entertained by a woman is much greater than which is entertained by a man. <coughs> Hence it is, O Brahman, that I wish these children to come back to life, those born by me, as a woman ascetic. The lady responded, The affection that is entertained by a woman is much greater than which is entertained by a man. Hence it is, O Brahman, that I wish these children to come back to life, those who were born by me as an ascetic woman. Thus addressed Indra, became highly pleased and said unto her, 
O lady, that are so truthful, that are so truthful, let your children come back to life that were born when you were as an as you lived as an ascetic woman. Do you take another boon, O foremost of kings? In fact, whether boon you likest, O of you, O you of excellent vows, do you take me whatever status you choose, that of a woman or a man? The lady said, so that way the Indra revived the children born when the king was a monarch as a man in male sex and also the children that were born when there was a transformation in the king and he turned into a woman and lived as an ascetic. Then the king, the Indra, asked, O oh, you of excellent vows, do you take from me whatever status you choose, that of a man and or a woman? Indra decided to give her another boon, whether if she wanted the life as a man or a woman. The response, the reply of the ascetic woman is very relevant. The lady said, I desire to remain a woman, O Shakra, addressing to the queen. In fact, do not wish to be restored to the status of manhood, O Vyas. She is addressing both the Queen Shakra as well as addressing using the word Vyas for Indra. I desire to remain a woman, O Shakra. In fact, do not wish to, re to be restored to the status of manhood, O Vyas. Hearing this answer, Indra was more surprised. Indra once again, once more, asked her, saying, Why is it so? You, puissant one, the most powerful and one of great authority, that abandoning the status of manhood, you wish that of a womanhood, and that too as an ascetic, not as a monarch in your manhood state? Hearing the answer, Indra once more asked her, saying, Why is it so? O puissant one, the powerful and one of authority, that you are abandoning the status of manhood, of power, of kingdom, of prosperity, you wish to remain the status of a womanhood ascetic. Question thus, the foremost of the monarch transformed into a woman answered. In acts of Congress, the pleasure that a woman enjoys is always much greater than what is enjoyed by men. It is for this reason, O Sakra, that I desire to continue as a woman. O foremost of the deities, truly do I say unto you that I derive greater pleasure in my present state of woman. In present status of womanhood, I am quite content with this status of womanhood that I now have. Do you leave me now, O Lord of heaven? Hearing these words, the Lord of the Celestials answered, So it be, and he proceeded to the heavens. Enough. Yeah.